Hello, good morning. James has said he would like to do the introduction this morning. We're not on the boat, we're not on shore. Well, we're basically on the shore, but where are we? Cornwall. We're up north. We're up north. James and I are up north. We're going to be fishing from a rock mark on the northeast coast today. I don't know if you can see. Uh, locals will immediately recognise where we are. We're going to be heading down. There's a little old pier just down there. We're going to be fishing off there. And as the tide ebbs away to low tide, we're going to have a rake around for some fossils. Yes! That's the plan. That's the plan. Unfortunately, because of all the, because of all the wet weather that we've been having, a lot, of these, a lot of these cliff paths, they end up getting washed away, which this one has. So this is how we've got to get down. Down these ropes, down there. You excited? Yeah. Wish us luck. Good man. <laughs> we managed it almost unscathed. Have a look around in here in a bit, get these rods set up. James and I have our own little baiting station set up. James has arranged everything. So that all we're doing is we have a few pre-made rigs in a bag, different bits of squid, some worms, some lug, some very old stinking ragworm. We've managed to get two rods out, but a larger bait at distance and a scratching rig in here. James is going to be fishing a couple of scratching rigs just tight inside for dabs, flounders, coalfish, anything maybe. I've got a larger rod that's further out for a codling. James has just finished baiting up another scratching rig. Well done. So I will I'll get this one cast out and I'll show you the rigs and the baiting. Are you going to give people a baiting demo? Yeah. Come. James is getting a nice little bite on his rod there. But like what we were talking about, it's a three hook scratching rod rig. So even if there is a fish on one of the hooks, he's still got two of the baits on there. So it's worth giving it a couple of minutes. You saw a good bite though, didn't you? Yeah. Made the rig himself, baited the rig himself. I'll give him a little bit of help with the cast. That's just because down in close, I've got a feeling there's quite a few rocks. Right, James's first fish is a rockling. Affectionately called a slug or a turd fish. <laughs> yeah, keep an eye on it. All that was there was it was just a little tool scratching rig baited with a bit of worm. One of the hardest things to teach kids when getting them into fishing is when to strike into a bite. This is also one of those things in fishing where there is no really hard and fast rule. A lot of it just comes with experience. All I'm teaching James here is, get yourself into a position where you can strike into the fish. Hold it with a bit of patience. When you get a good bite, lift and start winding. Then all it is, is just about keeping a bend in the rod and bringing the fish to shore. James has had himself a lovely coli. Right, what does this look like to you? A uh, pullet. It does, it looks just like a pullet. But it's like a coli. Yeah. What was the fight like? Like a full on drop down. Yeah. Full on dropping down like a pollock. James's first, James's first coal fish. A lot like a pollock apart from coal fish have got a straight lateral line here. And, and a smaller down. eye and also the underbite and yes you're right on the back of them he's a bit darker right there we go hooks out 
Take him over here and drop him back. Yeah. Well, we didn't blank. Well done, James. Oh, let's go. Well, that was a mad few seconds there. James was down on the beach searching for fossils. I turned the camera off to save the battery. I was looking round and two rods were going at the same time. James, don't, don't do that hammering for the second. All it was was a little tube scratching rig that James has made up with some floating beads on. And that was some very old stinky ragworm and squid. You don't get to see that because it's just dropped off on the air, but that was a little lobster. <laughs> yeah, a little lobster was hanging on. Thought I was getting a bit of a weird bite. One of the bites that we had earlier on on one of these rods was like a whack round and it bound it up into a hole and we thought, ah, it's maybe a little lobster. That's what that was. Just on a squid and cart bait. Another slug. Tell you what, given their size, they don't have to give a nice bite. <laughs> I'll show you this rig before I cast it out because I don't know if I'm going to get it back. But yeah, it's just a pulley rig with a rotten bottom, and that's squid and lug. And the way that works is that I've opened up the bottom of this lead, it clips into the imp there, so when it hits, it should be running just on that weak link. For somewhat bigger, codling maybe, hopefully. Got to be an optimist, don't you? Yeah, the bigger baits are just getting pecked out by little fish. The risk being is I don't want to cast them little scratching rigs right into the middle of the rocks just because they're more likely to get snagged up. Right, You've just reeled this one in, haven't you? So now you're rebaiting. Yep. And show us, talk to us a little bit how you're rebaiting. So how you rebait is you put, I do this, I put a worm on the back, a piece of squid, then a worm on the front. Oh yeah. Good. Right, using that hook and one of your worms here, show me how you've been putting your worms on. So you hold it by the head, don't you? And then you just thread him up the hook, don't you? Yep. Good job. And why are we rebaiting a rig like this? So that we have a spare one to just cast straight back out again, don't we? Yeah, there we had a bit of a double hookup. Oh, you're stuck. Yeah, there's some rocks right in front of us. James is now stuck in the rocks. We'll have a look and see if we can't get it out. This is why you don't stop finding it. There you go. Good man. Right, let's give it to the camera. Nice size collie. Yeah. Uh, look, that was where it got stuck into the bottom. There you go. 
They're pretty looking fish, aren't they? Yeah. They do look a lot like a pollock, but yes. Do you know why they're called a coal fish? Because their colours are like bit, a coal. They're a little bit black, yeah. You want to get me them tweezers? Yeah, the two coalies that we've had so far have been on the rigs with like a little bit of bling on. Last one's had some flotation beads and this one has got just some, some little beads on. You said, didn't you, when I said to you, I said, what rig should we put back out? And you said scratching rig, and it's a scratching rig that's caught it, hasn't it? Yeah. Come here. There we go, there's the hook out. Too small to keep. All that rig there was, was just the same chalk scratching rig that we've been using on the scratching rods. And it was a, a little tiny, like that smaller hook. Just one that you baited up on it? Yeah. I think you baited this one up on camera as well. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Do you want to do it again? No, you can do it. Don't mean to do it, your finger's a bit cold. Yeah. Yeah, whatever. Whatever we had on on that rod, I felt it come off halfway out. I think it was just probably a rockling. But yeah, fortunately James was here to see the double hook up. You saw the bite, didn't you? Picked it up, stuck straight, landed it, well done. But the area that we've got here in front of us is there is quite a lot of rock. Which is why you've got to keep the rod tip high and keep winding at all times to keep the fish up in the water so it doesn't go in the rocks. So we were really lucky there to get that back out. Get them baits back out. Fishing a rock mark like this, I mean we're we're in a comfortable rock mark. I've brought James down in here, which is why we're fishing from this spot. These aren't the conditions that we'd come fishing for cold off a rock mark. We've got a flat sea. You want a bit of a built sea. Something churning it all up. The only reason why we've come here fishing today is because it's an easy enough mark to fish and we were in the area. We've been we've been right up in the northeast visiting my grandmother who is 99. And we've dropped back down to do a little bit of fishing. Oh, there's a bite. See the left hand rod? Yeah. All we're doing is we're doing a bit of a scratching day. We'd be lucky if we catch a codling. We're after things like flounders and coalies. There's been a lot of haddocks caught up and down there. Oh, there it is. Right here. Oh, do you want to reel it in, Jim? You can reel it in, Dad. Oh, thank you. You're suffering with cold toes, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And we did have a little bit of a mishap coming down that hill. Yeah, like I say, the, the conditions here, it's just because it's comfortable to bring James fishing here. And if I was going to be targeting cod, trying to fish a rock mark like this to its full potential, you'd come down here when it's rough. Water's still nicely coloured up and I would be fishing on a night. You might notice in the video that I'm spotting a bit of a shiner. <laughs> There's a pretty funny story behind it. Now people have followed this oh, bite on the green rod as well. Oh, I might have a double hook up. Oh, that's definitely a bite on the purple though. Yeah. Before I was rudely interrupted by a phantom fish it was biting but just wasn't taking it. Yeah, there's a bit of a funny story behind this. I've, uh, I've been doing quite a bit of work with Boat Life. Anybody who follows the channel will have known that I did quite a bit last year and I went. Boat Life is an exhibition at the NEC in Birmingham. It's in February. It was in February this year and February 2024. Some of the exhibitors that are there are boats from everything from leisure boats, canal boats, to fishing boats, to kayaks, uh, everything about being on the water. Some of the exhibitors there have been going round with a friend of mine and we've been filming little bits of videos, promotional videos on all of their online vessels. And we went out to Sulcombe the other day. It was a bit of swell. I don't know if the video's gone up yet or not, but yeah, we come off a wave quite hard. I wasn't paying too much attention. Flew forward and then bounced my face off the console. So I bruised the bridge of my nose and I bruised all of my eye. Um, what I'll do, shamelessly, to plug Boat Life, <laughs> is I'll put some information into the description of the video. I might even link to the video where this happened. You don't see it happen because it happened off camera. 
But yeah, you'll see at the start of the video that it's completely fine and then afterwards as the day goes on I'll just get more and more of a shiner. Yeah, it's still pecking at it, whatever it is. Whatever that is there, it's still pecking at them. Could be out, could be long span sea scorpions, could be blennies, could be gobies, could be rocklings, it's going to be something small. But that's why we're using small hooks, isn't it, James? Yeah. Yeah. This area here where we are, it used to be like a harbour for iron ore being loaded, um, loaded from the mine onto ships to take up to Jarrow. And this is what's left of like the old pier. But yeah, when the tide ebbs off, I don't know where you're going to see it because it is really dirty water. But there are like broken rocks down here in front of us, which is why when you're bringing a fish in, you keep your rod tip high and you keep winding. Yeah, as the tide ebbs off more and more and more, it's going to get shallower and shallower and shallower, so it's going to be harder. Depending on how much bait we've got left, we might drop down and we might fish a little bit of the flood tide on a beach mark. There must be quite a few little lobsters out there, because I've had definitely two because I've seen them drop off on the surface and one of them, they give like a, a bit of like a flapping bite as they, as they pull in at baits and try to swim with their tail and then when they come to the surface they just let go. Give us a few more hours till it ebbs off, then we'll go for a rake around on shore, see if we can't find any fossils and then we'll see how we feel about going fishing for some dabs, dabs on the beach. <laughs> oh. This one actually is not a normal rockling. This is a five bearded rockling. I don't know whether you can see that, but four on the top, one on the bottom, five bearded rockling. If these guys, if these slugs are managing to get to the baits, there's not much else out there. But considering that that was a good hundred odd yards out, and this is the size of the fish, <laughs> they give a cracking bite, don't they, for a little fish? Come on, let go. A strong bite on him as well, he's biting onto the hook. I don't know well you can see it, but yeah, five bearded broccoli. We really are scraping the bottom of the barrel if that's what we're catching. <laughs> James is losing interest a bit as well. He's up there smashing rocks in half looking for fossils. Yeah. We'll maybe give these baits... Give the fishing another 45 minutes till the tide ebbs off a little bit more and then we'll go and have a sandwich and have some fossil hunting. <laughs> we're down the far end there. <laughs> Both rods are going at the same time and I was trying to choose which one to bring in. Now we have a very skinny little white in here. Now these are just voracious predators. They're just, he's really skinny and actually he's blind in one eye. Wick little teeth. Yeah, that's a little whiting. I think a shoal of these must have just come through because like you say we're getting bites on. Well, still getting bites on two of the rods and I've just brought one in. Again, just little tiny hooks, baited with a bit of worm and tipped with squid. See them teeth in there. Like little pins, them teeth. If I was fishing on a bigger beach, this would be going back out as a live bait. Whatever that was there, we had two fish on, and one of them's come off halfway in. And it's left a slug on the bottom. Because yeah, that was that was properly digging that. I imagine that it was a whiting or a coley, and just because the hooks are so small, it just popped itself off. Well dad, yeah. I think you're just making hard work. <laughs> I was hard just making hard work of it. <laughs> Do not stop. That's it. Keep the rod tip high. Keep reeling. There you go. Oh, yeah, I can see it. What we're we looking at. Keep going, keep going. 
Don't stop, don't stop. Right, keep winding. Right, now we can lower the rod tip a little bit. Whoa, okay, right, keep winding, keep winding. Don't stop. What you've got there is a short spine sea scorpion. Keep winding, keep winding. Don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. They aren't gems, but they are spiky. Yeah, yeah. So be careful. If you're in Canada, you'd be calling this a sculpin. Right, a long clip of rig and then we'll have a look at that, but well done, James. Yeah, these guys have just got very big mouths and a lot of big spines. Is it still going? I'm going to need the forceps to get. Oh no, maybe not. Long spined or short spined, I'm not sure. Usually up here it's, it's short spined. Doubt if I caught this in Cornwall, I would have definitely said it would have been a long spined sea scorpion. But coincidentally, the larger ones are the short spined. There we go. I'll have that worm back if that's alright, thank you. Yeah. These are spikes. All of these dorsals have got a spike in, these have got a spike on. They're just a very spiky little fish. It lives in a rock pool. And the rig that that fell to was just a little bit of worm, but with a floating bead. I need a cameraman. Right, point the rod tip towards where the line's going. Wind a little bit of line in so there's no slack. Right, can you feel it? Right, wait there. What you're doing now is you're waiting for a bit of a bend. And as soon as it gives another bite, strike up and start winding. But it needs to be a proper bite. Oh, go on, you've got it. Go on, you've got it. Keep it up. Well done. It is a benefit now, like where, the, where we are on this mark, because it is so shallow down there, you can see all the rocks are starting to come out. Having that longer rod to keep it higher. So just keep it up and keep winding. Does it feel like a fighter? A little. With these tiny hooks like that, as soon as they come down in all the rocks, if that fish goes into any seaweed and pulls up against then you're going to lose it just because the hooks will just pull straight out. Don't stop James, it'll be down in the rocks down there. Have a look. look. It's quite a pretty looking one that one though isn't it? Yeah. Oh. This one almost looks like a burbot. Right, do you want to, James, you're hitting me, in the, you're hitting me with the rod. <laughs> yeah. Stacks of these about, but it's not showing a good sign for anything else because if all these guys are like the slowest on the baits, so if these are the ones that are getting there, there's no else there. Now hold it, hold the line and hold them so it don't flap about. Good man. It's this moment of waiting, right? This is the hardest to do. <laughs> waiting for like a good committed bite to. Does it feel like it's stuck? Yeah. All right, well, what we're gonna have to do then, just give me a second. Yeah, as soon as you stop and it gets down in the rocks, that's when you're gonna get snagged. So keep the rod tip up, keep winding. Is it still there, is it? Maybe. Stop winding, keep going, keep going. Lift it up. There you go. Yep. There we are. Grab all your rod. That looks like a coli. It is a coli. It's a tiny coli. Yeah, all that period of time that we're going without catching now, and now that the water's nearly all gone. Start, start knocking a few fish out. Just after I'd said I was going to start packing the rods away, wasn't it? And this is definitely the smallest coli we've had today, though, isn't it? Yeah, tiny. Let's get it up and shot back. <laughs> Come over here, look. You know what I was saying about there must be a lot of lobsters around here because we've had a couple drop off. Well, yeah, now we've landed one. <laughs> Took the hook fair and square right in his mouth, look. Well this actually is a little female. 
could feel it on the way in it just just felt like a lump and then when I got it almost almost to the side it started tugging back Look, that was the hook that it was landed on that was so funny so that <laughs> a little female lobster and it's only got one claw and I can't and I don't know if you can tell this claw here is a bit smaller this one look you can see look it's just yeah. growing it back yeah and this one's smaller like if she lost it or something it is maybe. yes she's lost she's lost which claw is it her left hand side one yeah but what type is it it's her cutter claw that's her cutter claw so she's cruncher. lost her cruncher yes yes she has she's also lost a few legs yeah this one now the minimum landing size up here in the northeast <coughs> sorry minimum landing size up here in the northeast is different to down home down home it's 90 mil up here it's 87 mil this one here I reckon is still a bit short you can tell it's a female we've covered this in loads of the foraging videos before but you can tell it's a female because she's got a really flared tail yeah, I would I would estimate yeah this one's this one's probably going to be like low 80s it's a lucky day as well she's a little bit dirty isn't she yeah <laughs> been a multi-species day yep what were you saying when I brought it up? So we've caught crabs, but we've never caught a lobster yeah. on, on a rod and line, have we? We need to hold tight. We need to hold tight there around the middle. Yeah. And if you can't see, there's a tiny claw because she's lost her cruncher claw. Yeah. Let's go and take her back. Yep. I've packed all the rods away now. I've been using one of these rod carrying cases. Not a joke, is I just put all the rods. I've been using pen titles. I've been using some pentidals today. I'd say um, they're better off on the beach than they are on the rocks. But uh, yeah, I'm probably, hopefully, unless James is too tired when we finish rock hunting, we might go and do some fishing on the beach with him as well. But, yeah, just lash everything together like that. We'll leave our bags up here for a couple of minutes and go have a rake around. Might have a walk through the huts. See if we can't find a couple of fossils. We had a problem about wow. This is the largest fossil. James has been you've been doing some rock hunting already, haven't you? Yep. That is a really big print of an ammonite. Oh no, there's a second one. That yep. is a really good find, James. Well done. I have also found some of the James and I are having a little bit of a rake around just down in here to see if there's any fossils that are already dislodged from the rock. And I've just dropped this little girl back into this pool to liven her up a little bit. We are. I'll explain all that in a second. I'm just going to take her down to the sea down here. Just drop her on there. Yep. And away she goes. Yep. Up oh, onto into the, the Into the murky mud. Yep, and also onto her back. Right. This here is what James is talking about. This is nodule. an iron pyrite's nodule. Looking for those as well because these sometimes have fossils inside of them. Split. Yeah. The place where we are up here in the northeast, we're part of the North North Yorkshire Jurassic Coast. Yeah, all sorts. Of, there's there's uh, quite a bit of jet on this bit of coast, and some. Um, I think it was plesiosaurs, nictiosaurs that have been found not far from here. Oh, good spot. That's like a. Oh, it's already been broken. Yeah. We'll um, have a little walk through the huts. Oh, look. You know what that is, don't you? Scales. Oh, yeah. Fish scales, fossilised fish scales. Remind See them all, all the individual ones? Yeah, they looks like something that Baryonyx would eat. Mm. <laughs> I'm glad I found some. I <laughs> was promising James would come and find some fossils. There's next to that on this part of the beach. But yeah, that's a cool find, that. Yeah. That's... It's been washed a lot though. It's been washed a lot by the sand. But yeah, that's um, that looks like a fossilised fish. You can see all the individual scales. Oh, that's cool. Hey, look. See that? That's cool. Yeah. Oh, there's another one right here. Yeah. 
all them fossilised oyster shells. Yeah. We'll step sun. back a little bit and look at the sunnies. There's the other one. These down here are fishermen's huts. There is um I'll find some crab pots in a minute and I'll talk to you a little bit about them. Nice. Well, like a pirate's cove. Yeah, yeah. but a fisherman's hat. Mm -hmm. Oh look he's fixed his fixed his boat with limpets. using some common sense. People who've watched the channel for a while you'll probably remember this. I did do a video on it just entirely about how to make your own crab and lobster pots by hand from scratch and it was this design. Well, not not these because these are these aren't working right now. <laughs> Man had slightly less holes in them. But yeah a three bowed or four bowed parlor pots with soft eyes. That's a three bowed pot one, two, three, and that's a four bow pot. One, two, three, four. And those are your soft eyes. Yeah, it's a, it's a design that was taught to me by my granddad when I was a kid. Good thing about using them down in Cornwall as well is they don't catch spider crabs, it keeps the spider crabs out of the pots. They're really good for catching lobsters. Ooh, how are you getting on down here? You don't want to be looking here, this is where everyone looks, this is right down on the path. If you're going to find something that nobody else has found before, you need to go to the places where nobody else has been before. I found quite a cool one. Let me take this one home and try and really gently dislodge the... There's one there. Oh yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. How about that one? Oh, that's really cool. Mm. It's a shame it's split. Yeah. Oh, it's a big print, isn't it? Oh, look. There's a little love heart. Mm, you do seem to hit into patches where there are loads of them. There's a piece. There's a piece. There's one. There's one, there's one. There's one. James has just found a lovely one there, look. Hold it still. That is a really pretty one, James. Well yeah, done. Yeah, let's definitely take this one home. There's another little Bellamite. Yep. Stuck in the rock. Yeah, it's all the iron ore coming out of the cliff. Talk me through what we've found then, James. So, we have found a very stunning... Wait. That is a lovely one. Yeah. There are quite a few really nice little ammonites. Yeah. A couple stuck in some rocks. It's like a bit of a geode. Loads of bits of bellamite. Golden star. Yeah. A little star of iron pyrites. We found a bit of whelk. I don't know what that is. That, that one's quite. That kind of looks like quite a shark's tooth. It looks like a megalodon. Mm. Don't know, know what that is. It looks like a pair of megalodon but, yeah, teeth. You can take one. Which one do you want to take? Mm. I would take that one. And I'm going to take this one because I think that when I get home, I can use a chisel and I can chip that out. I'm going to ask to bring this to geode. Okay. All the way back up there now. Yeah, I've, I've taken a couple of seconds of a breather. That kid is like a mountain. Well, I am carrying out gear like, but that kid is like a little mountain goat. Wait for me! <laughs> no! Where's to that bench at the top of there. Thank you going, eh? 
That's his concentration phase. <laughs> He's not... I'm gonna slow down and take a breath. Cheeky little chip stop. James and I have had a little bit of a snack and we've come down to try a couple of hours. Low water now, tide's going right on the way out. We're going to try a couple of hours to try and pull out a dab or a flounder on the beach. This is Sandsend Beach. Sandsend's down there. Whitby Piers are a long way in the distance down there. I'm just going to use up a little bit of the bait we've got left. The conditions, it allows us to fish this area. I mean, anybody who's done a little bit of watercraft fishing on beaches, you'll know. Try that again. I've tried to say this piece like three times and the batteries keep dying. It's starting to get quite cold and batteries don't like the cold. Yeah. To show you why I've picked this area of the beach here. You can see a gully there. The gully about 400 metres down there and this fills in behind us. That's the beauty of being down here at low tide is I'll see where the gullies are straight away. You can see where the gullies are by where the, the waves are breaking. See they're breaking down there and they're breaking down there. Wherever they're not breaking, or wherever, wherever they break closer to the shore, it means there's a little bit of a deep patch. Generally a wave breaking means that it's shallow. It's a reef or it's a bar or it's a wave. This area right in front of me, the waves don't break as far out. So it shows me there's a bit of a gully. I'm fishing just these scratching rigs. The same scratching rigs as before, look. It's just two hook scratching rigs with a little lead. And it's going to be worm and a mixture of Worm and a mixture of squid or mackerel just to tip it with. I've stuck a couple of them out distance with grip leads on and a couple of them out. Well, I will have stuck a couple of them out with rolling leads on. Just to be able to figure out where the, where the water's going, what's going on. As the tide starts flooding in, this area that we're on, this little bar that we're on here, is going to flood. So we're going to have to retreat back. But it does look like we are getting some bites. Do you want to reel this one in? green one right do your jacket up then uh, I don't know if you can see it going yeah just to try and get them out where the brick is you don't need to go too far people overcast when you're fishing like this the fish will be less than 100 meters away from the shore usually just around about the second or third breaker you ready it's struggling with cold fingers Right, I'll help you out. Right, just as before, point the rod to where the line's going, wind it until it's tight, and then when, you, when you're almost there, lift it straight up as high as it'll go, and start winding, and just steady wind. Don't need to go mad, just a steady wind, all right? So you ready? Right, go on then. Just, just do it, I've got it. Right, lift it straight up. Right up. Don't go mad, just steady wind, steady wind. Because we're on the sand here, because there's no rocks out in front of us, you don't need to worry about getting it up in the water. In fact, sometimes, if you haven't had any bites for a while, what I'll do is I'll trot the baits a little bit. I'll just give them two or three winds just to disturb them on the bottom. The natural. Are you going to listen to me next time? Put your gloves on. Yeah. You can give them advice, but they've got to learn a lesson by themselves, don't they? Right, do you feel like there's something waggling? I'm not sure. We'll find out in a second, won't we? Now, like I say, it's, I'm not expecting to catch any massive fish down here. It's not going to be like a bagging up session on codlings. This is going to be to catch like a flounder or a dab, just to use up the bait. Oh, uh, you might have some here, Jim. Yeah, you do. <laughs> Brilliant. There's your dab. Keep winding. Ta-da! That's a dab. Yeah. You can tell it's a dab because yeah. they are almost see-through when you hold them up to the light. Also, they've got a really dainty tail. I see, look. I have a layer of one of them. Don't tie it. Almost see through to look through. I have a flat mat on one of them. Also, if you rub it, just rub your finger over its head, feel it's a little bit rough. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I actually have a lure. Target achieved. I actually have Dabs. a lure. Dabs. You do have, you do have a lure. 
Well done. Right. In the top of my box of tricks are some of my homemade disgorgers. I have got a video on the Fish Locker Workshop showing you how to make these and how to use them. I'll tag it into the description of this video. I'm going to show you now at once one. That dab has taken that hook a little bit deep. That's why you need one of these. What we've got here is we just put your dab, look how camouflaged they can be. James is going to film this. <laughs> I've got my own cameraman today. Go on James, you stand over here for a sec. Right, just, just keep it there. You don't need to go any closer. Just keep it there. Right. Put it through. Wrap the line around it a few times. Pull it back through. Like that. Now you come through like this. And you turn the hook around. Yeah, see, look. Yep. Right, try and hold the camera still. <laughs> I know you're excited to see it, but yeah, there you go. And do you want to release your dab? Yeah. I'm going then. You're really quick. No. Just, yes. just release him there into the water. I think actually, I think we've got a bite on this other rod. So yeah, these, these are made out of a coat hanger. Which rod? Every rod by the look of it. Both of those two have got big bites on. And this one's all the way on the beach. Yeah. Get your gloves on. <laughs> I was hoping that we wouldn't see too many of these. But those are skinny, skinny whiting. Double shot of the skinniest whiting you are ever going to see. <laughs> those are live bait size. Get these one up and shot back. In fact, actually, that one's got... Don't know how well you can see that, but that one's got a parasite in its gill. got some type of parasite living in the gill. Right, the bites are coming on fast now. No messing around. I've put softer leads on. I've put light leads for soft ground. So what they're going to do is They've got a high bow in the line, so the wind is going to drag the baits across the sand. Also, with the current, they're going to roll around, so I'm hoping that they're going to roll about and find gullies and find fish. So all I've got to do is keep an eye on the bow of the line. You're not going to be able to see it because of the camera, because it's thin dark. But the line is getting a big bow. So every now and again, all I'm doing is just turning the handle on the reel. It means that they're eventually going to work all the way in but it doesn't matter because you're going to be searching out that much ground you've got that much more chance of catching a fish oh oh there's a good bite james See you. oh there's a definite bite that was it james come here quick this one keep an eye on it it's all right that's why all of our bags and everything are all the way up there Right, that was a really big bite on that rod. I'm going to move these back. You keep an eye on them rods there. <laughs> I was just thinking I was going to have to move off that bar. So I'll give it five minutes, I'll sort them fish out. Five minutes was too long. You can see this area that we were stood on earlier on. It's now almost covered up. Are you ready? Right then, let's have a look and see what we can do. Right. Yeah. Some of it is just the waves, James. Yeah, even though right now it's probably about three degrees. And he was complaining about being cold earlier. It's not cold now, is it? Never taking your kids fishing. You need to make sure they're catching fish. Otherwise, they just they won't stick at it. Oh, James, you want to go and stand by them rods? Make sure they don't get pulled over.
It's like being back in Cornwall. Schooly bass. <laughs> Just lip up, look. This is why, look, see how, see how close that is to the corner oh, of his lip? Yeah, yeah. That's why you've just got to be steady winding when you're reeling them in, alright? Yeah. And that was just on a bit of worm. <laughs> just needs to be about five times bigger. Go on. Going the wrong way, lad. I'm going to go that way. Well done James, that is a much better sized whitey. Yeah. That looks like the size of the deep. No, it looks more for that. Yeah, James has pulled out. Across. James has pulled out a nice size whitey for the beach. Yeah. All by yourself, wasn't it? Yeah. Just saw the bite, picked the rod up, reeled it all in, there's the hook. Yeah, sure, it's all this little sharp teeth, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Let's go and get this drop back. Right, that bar behind us is completely washed out. Just as I was bringing all the rods in to change around. We had a little tiny coli on there as well. Proper little baby coli. So what I'm going to do now... Also, there's, it's a different colour. It's turquoise and the other colis yeah. we've had is... You are absolutely right, this one is like bluey green, isn't it? Yeah. Still what it is, I would call this a billet. What we're going to do now is we are potentially, we're going to give it another three quarters of an hour. The sun is just about to go down, I would like to try it for a little bit of a darkness. We'll go to another sandbank, we'll put the baits out, we'll give it a little bit. And then we'll, um, yeah, you got a bit of water in your wellies then, didn't you? Yeah, we were trying to travel. Yeah, I think there's a fish on that one. Keep going, good lad. The culprit. I didn't realise. You feel like you're looking for something. Well, we fished it out for as long as we're going to give it. Literally just bringing the rods in, the last rod that we left out, I was holding out for a flounder. I just thought if we catch, if we catch a flounder that's all the species that we want. The last rod, the last bait, there's your flounder. Brilliant! <laughs> it's not the biggest one I've ever caught, but it's a flounder. Come here have a look. Right, looking at it, can you see them spots on there? I can already see the spots. I can already see It looks spots. a little bit like a place, doesn't it, when you've got little spots like that? Yeah, I already saw But it, it is still a flounder. Yeah, it is something. Yeah. Perseverance. Awesome, my dad says we've got a halibut out Yeah, they, sadly it's not a halibut, it's just a flounder. <laughs> But yeah, this is the species that we're after. This is the one that we've stayed on a little bit longer for. So, cool fish. Yep. Cool fish, two types of rocklings, long spine sea scorpion, uh, whiting, bass, bass, dab, flounder. Ooh, seven. Let's get this unhooked, get it shot back. Ooh, seven or eight speed. <laughs> Very happy to see this little fish. We have made it back to the van. Yep. A little bit wind swept coming up that bank, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, wind's really picked up now. We timed it just right. Um, I don't know how many species we caught, but this is the first time that you've seen a lobster caught in modern life. James has just 
impressed me from start to finish on this trip. You have done really, really well. I am so, so proud of you. Yeah. Running up and down that cliff like a little billy goat and doing all your own baiting up and everything. Yes. This is like the biggest van trip that me and James have done. I mean, it's eight hours from home. I've got eight hours to drive back to Cornwall now. So I think you're going to be asleep soon, aren't you? Yeah. I hope you enjoyed joining us. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later.